Welcome to the AngelsWin.com podcast featuring Jeff Stoddard and AngelsWin.com founder Chuck Richter. And now here's Jeff Stoddard. Hello, Angels fans. Happy Sunday. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Uh, along with Angels Win founder Chuck Richter, I'm Jeff Stoddart. Victor could not be with us today, so we needed somebody to kind of fill that attractive part of our of our <laughs> show. So we <laughs> to offset Chuck and I. So we invited a guest. So Chuck, do you want to introduce our guest that we have here? Yes, we have Breezy. Now it's Nolan. That's how you Nolan. pronounce it. Nolan. Nolan. Okay, Breezy okay. Nolan. With us, uh, everybody that follows us on Twitter probably follows her as well. She is known for uh, <laughs> getting captured on Valley Sports West for Carlos Estevez Grand Slam that he gave up last year against the Seattle Mariners to mm -hmm. cough up the lead. And what exactly did you say? <laughs> I was going like this, and I said, please, for the love of God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you did did um, Carlos Estevez see that clip and and didn't did you guys have a little interaction? Yes, yeah. So I ended up doing batting practice. I think a couple weeks later, and he came over and I was like, "Oh, did you by any chance see that meme?" Um, you know where I was saying, "Please for the love of God," and he was like, "He was like, you have no idea how many people sent me that." He was like. And the funniest part was he goes, thank God I got out of it. What? Got out of it? He he didn't realize that that was the night that he blew his first save. Oh, my gosh. Oh, 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 yeah. oh. And then, and then yeah. it was all downhill from there for him, really. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I didn't have the heart to tell him in that moment. I was like, yeah, that's so funny. Um but he oh, said he was sent it by like his whole family, all of his friends. And um, we laughed about it. And then I ended up seeing him again at spring training. And he looked at me and he goes, I hope I don't make you viral again this year. So, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. He's really nice. Yeah. Good sport about it. That's great. Well, it was great, great to meet you in spring training, uh, Breezy, um, and uh, your friends uh, that you brought as well. Yeah. Um, Travis, I had no idea you knew Travis. Um, yeah. That's crazy. And, that's, and so, yeah, so that, it was great to meet All you right, there. Chuck, so thousands of people are listening and watching this going, who's Travis? So yeah, you need so to give true. him a little more. He's a guy on Twitter that, I mean, I've been interacting with for years. And so, uh, and then you're sitting with him and you guys knew each other. And I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, so Travis and I, connected over Instagram like five or six years ago over Angels Baseball. He lives in Texas. He used to live in Orange County. Um, yeah. And we just became like best of friends. I think I text him almost every day. Um, we're constantly in contact talking about the Angels because we both watch every single game. And he gives me little insights. I give him little insights about what's going on with the team. And that was the very first day we had ever met in our five or six year friendship. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Angels so win like, fan fest, bringing people together for 20 yeah. years now, Chuck. Honestly, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We actually, we had gone to the game together that day and then, um, and then we went to the, to the party afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. That's it was great. super awesome. And then he actually just came with me. Uh, he was out here with his family um, going to Disneyland and stuff. And so he came to a game with me on Monday night. Okay. Nice. Yes. Very cool. Yes. Very cool. Which we won. That was our only game we won against the Phillies. So <laughs> <laughs> Good timing. Yeah. Good timing. Well, as we're recording this, the, uh, the Angels are playing the Cleveland Guardians, the artist formerly known as the Indians. And yeah. uh, it is the... Bottom of the eighth inning, the Angels are down two to one. Um, Chuck Griffin Canning had a really good start. Um, he did. Was scoreless going into the sixth inning, looking solid, one of his best outings of the year. Mm -hmm. And then. Well, I mean, you can't really fault him for giving up two runs in a game. 
and against and you know against one of their better they're the best player on the guardians right jose ramirez they shut him down all weekend until that moment um but the angels had several chances in this game to pile on the runs with yeah. runners and score and they just didn't deliver so yeah. to me i'm not putting this game on canning at all to me it's the offense and it's been a struggle you know yeah so you know outside of you know the game that we won against the phillies um, you know, the game on Friday night, which was nice. And then we get torched yesterday <laughs> and you're thinking you're going into that. You got Detmers and I was thinking, wow, we're finally going to win a series, right? We're up one, nothing. Right. And it with Detmers on the Hill going up against a guy that's a journeyman guy, really. I mean, Ben Lively and just, we just couldn't, couldn't do anything. So journeyman guys, or as the angels call them, Cy Young candidates. Exactly. Um, <laughs> it's been that way forever. It's always been that way. <laughs> Breezy, thoughts on the game? Thoughts on the series so far? Uh, I mean, I looked up. I, I looked at the lineup this morning, and I, I was just like, I don't even know who's on this team anymore. This is just ridiculous. I mean, I personally as a season ticket holder, I go to a lot of games every year and I've never felt so uninterested in angels baseball. And that's saying a lot because even by September, when I know we're out of it, we're not, nothing's going to happen. I'm still in it because I'm like, at the end of this, you know, month, I'm not going to have angels baseball. So I'm like, just, you know, loving every moment of it. And it's May 5th. Which, by the way, I don't think we even mentioned Cinco de Mayo. Um, <laughs> um, Happy Cinco de Mayo, everyone. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> Cinco de Drinco. You can cheers um, your water if you want to, Breezy. That's fine. No, I got my coffee. My oh, angels. Perf- even better. Even yes. better. There you um, go. I, you know, by May 5th, the fact that I am so uninterested and just like confused on who is even on our team and the lineup every day, I've, I've never experienced this before as an Angel fan. Like this is just, it's crazy. And I, I don't know, like we were talking about before this as a season ticket holder, I'm not shocked that people are not buying tickets because I don't even want to watch it for free. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, so to to give everybody some insights, before we jumped on, we were kind of doing introductions. Chuck had met Breezy at uh, our Angels Win Spring Training Fan Fest in Tempe. And let's see. Yeah, two uh, run. Naylor, Naylor just hit a, uh, a two Naylor, run homer Naylor one. Yeah. for the Guardians. So it's now four to one Guardians and uh, game yeah. over. <laughs> <laughs> So any, gol- so any golf on I can, uh, but <laughs> we were, we were talking about um, doing introductions and Breezy was, was talking about being a season ticket holder and having difficulty selling tickets, mm-hmm. uh, you know, even on big giveaway nights, you want to kind of go into a little bit of what you shared with us? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, so our, in my opinion, our tickets are the best in the house. We are front row, right next to the on-deck circle. If you're planning on interacting with players, that's exactly where you want to be. And then the view of the field is, you know, there's it, you know, it doesn't get any better. And before Shohei Otani left, you know, we had never had any issues selling tickets. It was the easiest thing on the planet. Um, yeah. People, you know constantly trying to even ask us you know when are we going to sell them and so coming into this year we knew it might be challenging um and that's kind of where we even thought do we want to you know renew our season tickets because it's probably going to be really hard to sell them um but i had no idea that it was going to be this hard and i had no idea that the team we wouldn't have half of our starting players already by may 1st you know like this is just unbelievable and i was at stagecoach last weekend so i couldn't go to any of the star wars weekend games which normally huge hit people yeah. would want to go sell you know they would want to buy the tickets for you know double what they normally would go for 
and I had them up on StubHub. I just kept dropping the price, dropping the price, dropping the price, dropping the price. Nothing. Friday night game, giveaway, Star Wars night, nothing. It may have been a giveaway. It may have been the drone show. I don't know. I can't remember. I think it was the drone show. Yeah. Which also... Incredible. Still very Why would cool. People not want yeah. to do that, you know. So, um, yeah, just just crazy. I don't. I don't know. To me, it's it's obviously Artie Marino's fault, but it's like he got the money from the season ticket holders, and then could care less whether or not it screwed us over in the process. Which is just. Yeah. I mean, I think after this year, many season ticket holders are going to get out of there. Yeah. yeah. He has to know this, right? He can't be stupid. I mean, that this was going to be an effect of losing Otani. You're losing the Otani fans, but then you're also the quality of the the team that he's putting on the field suffers. Right. And then, you know, I don't know what their thinking was to just spend on relief pitching. And it's not like the relief pitching we got are like lights out guys. Like they're slamming the door in the seventh, eighth, and ninth either, right? Right. And so it's it just blows my mind that, uh, again, to your point, you're right. All he cares about is making the money. And I think that's why he, um, which as an owner, you should, right? But you've got to look at the future, right? right? But the thing is, is he had to know the quality. If you're not going to replace an Otani, right? I mean, and you're going to lean on veterans that are aging like Trout and Rendon and who have been injury prone, you're really putting all your hope on your young guys to really step it up. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I don't know. I, I think that, uh, I, I was going to go to a different point. I lost my train of thought, but well, honestly, yeah, go ahead. The, and young guys have been doing good, but also like, I'm so baffled by Ron Washington at this point. Like he has given them zero consistency the lineup is literally fluctuating like crazy. And at the beginning of the season, he was like, we're not going to really change our lineup. It's pretty much set in stone. Like maybe we'll change it here and there. Right. And it has been the biggest roller coaster that I've seen in the right. past five years. I mean, every day it's, it's like, Oh, now he's up here. Now he's down here. Now, like there's, there's zero consistency. Um, and the comment of him saying that he threw names on the bed and then picked one up. Like, I, I pray that that was a joke, because if that's the way he <laughs> right. actually is making decisions, like, what is right. happening? And also, putting guys like, you know, Willie Calhoun in, in the cleanup spot, and, you know, just getting called up from AAA, and it's not like he blew the cover off the ball down there. And right. then, you know, Adrianza, <laughs> didn't he bat third or clean up one of the nights here recently as well? This past week, I'm like, I think he and was in, his, in the two spot today, right? Yeah, but uh, I don't think he's playing. Is he playing today? I don't think he's in the lineup today. Maybe he is. I don't know. Um, but it's like you're right. His, the consistency. Oh, what I was gonna what I was gonna say is he didn't want to put Ohapi or Adele in the middle of the lineup because he thought it was too much pressure for these guys. Right. So let's put in somebody that shit. You know, that's Literally. not actually performing. <laughs> Gosh. Anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, I have my question marks about Ron Washington, too. So far, he's made some kind of boneheaded uh, moves. Uh, yes. that have, and honestly, he was our saving grace, right? We went Literally. into the season with, with uh, a questionable roster, and we thought, well, you know, we'll all run through the wall for Wash, and the players will, too. And my God, they're running into a trench. If anything, <laughs> so a trench full of crocodiles and sharks and exactly. piranha. Literally. Uh, well, as we sit here on Cinco de Mayo, two thousand twenty-four. Um, well, actually, actually, let me put this a different way for both of you. If I would have told you both on March twenty-eighth, so back mm. on March twenty-eighth, if I would have told you both. Hey, Breezy. Hey, Chuck. The Angels on Cinco de Mayo are going to be tied with the Houston Astros. <laughs> we would have been like, let's how, go, baby. How fired up would you both yeah, be? Yeah. Seriously. I'd <laughs> instead, be like, let's go. 
Yes. <laughs> Instead, we are indeed tied with the Houston Astros as we both sit at the bottom of the AL West with a 12 and 21 record. Um, mm-hmm. The Angels are, let's see, one out, one strike away from being uh, 12 and 22. Jeez. It's. It's wild, you know, Breezy. I saw your 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 tweet earlier. You kind of you retweeted Jeff Fletcher from the Orange County Register when he posted the lineup, and mentioned what you you just said of I don't even know who this team is anymore, mm-hmm. and that I think that's how a lot of us feel. And yeah. and the yeah. Angels just lost, so the game is over, four to yeah. one Guardians. Um, and and we are <laughs> we are the super fans. Right, like yeah. Chuck and I run an Angels podcast. Chuck, you know we're celebrating our twentieth anniversary of the Angels website. Anybody that is you know following Angels Twitter follows Breezy and knows who she is. For the organization, we are your core audience, right? right? Yeah, and we're looking at the lineups every day, just going, "Huh, who's who's that?" When did when did we get him? Where did he yeah. come from? Was this a trade? Did we pull him up? Like I thought we, he retired. Right. <laughs> oh, I remember I remember he was my favorite player when I was in second grade. Now he's Literally. starting in second base. <laughs> Jeez. So what do we do with that? What do we do with that? I mean, honestly, um, I think that um and I said this before that really you just have to look at this season as like a transition, right? Like this is, let's just, and I wouldn't say a rebuild, but a retooling, right? And so you got to hope that the Nettos, the Ohapis, Adele, uh, Renhifos look great, Chanuels, um just perform well, because then you can evaluate the team after and say, okay, these are our core young guys. And now we can add, hopefully, right? This is how, this is what I'm hoping, Artie, in the general manager thing, and that we want to see what we have so that we can see where we need to fit those pieces to make it work, right, via free agency or trades. Um, so I'm just looking at kind of you go back to the 90s, right, when you got the Stammons coming up and uh, Garrett Anderson, Erstads, Edmonds, and those were fun years, even though we lost. I mean, those were some bad years, bad seasons, <laughs> but it was cool to see the young guys like the Salmons and the Garrett Anderson's do well. And, you know, heck, we lost so bad in the 90s, it netted us a number one overall pick, and we got Erstad. And then after that, we got Troy Gloss out of UCLA with, a, I think it was the third pick in the draft. The Angels have always been picking, you know, either nine or 10, but mostly in the, you know, the 20s for the past, yeah. like 10, 15, 20, you know, years. So um, it would be nice to have a, I, I hate to say this, but if, if we're truly going to suck, wouldn't it be great to have a top three pick? Will we get a guy like a Gloss or an Erstad, somebody of that, uh, you know, stature? So yeah. I don't know. I'm just looking at the positives in the young guys and hoping they develop this year. And that's really where, where my head's at with this team. Breezy, how do you get excited for the rest of the season? <laughs> I think it's different for me because I I'm getting very angry because it's like I if I can't sell the tickets then I feel almost responsible to cancel my plans that I have to go because I don't like wasting money Uh, so then I'm resenting them and I don't want to resent the team that like in my journey i feel like they kind of saved my life you know i i got sober at a young age and i went to um a baseball game when i finally got home from treatment and i was like oh i can actually have fun sober and i'm young and i feel normal and that's kind of where the like new addiction or obsession kind of came from was like going to a baseball game and feeling normal and and just falling in love with something else that wasn't alcohol and so you know this thing that like really changed my life and my sobriety 
is now becoming something that I'm resenting. And I'm like, how do I solve this problem? Like, this is not good for me. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to be upset with this team, you know, but it's hard. And it's like, you know, at least when Mike Trout's in the lineup, it's like, okay, I get to go watch Mike Trout. That's so cool. I'm not going to take that for granted. Um, you know, I always think that every time I see him play, like, this is so cool that I get to watch this man up close every single day. I'm so blessed for that. Um, so it's like when he's not in the lineup, I'm just, I'm trying to pick at straws of like, what am I excited about? Like what Chuck is saying, like, okay, I can look at the younger players and see what they're doing right and wrong. Um, but then it's like, you know, we're winning the game or no, we weren't winning the game. When was this? Two weeks ago, we were losing, we were down by two and Ron Washington decides to put Jose Suarez in. And then we would have won the game. Cause we ended up scoring three or four runs and we would have won if yeah. we had thrown him in there, you know, like it's just the craziest roller coaster that like, I, I, I know I'm not a fan of other baseball teams, but I can't imagine other people are feeling the way that we feel like it's just insane. It's insane. And the definition yeah. of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And it's like, yeah, I have to believe that Ron Washington is pushing certain buttons to get Perry Manasian to do what he wants. Like, that's the only way that I can sit in that seat and like <laughs> not blow my brains out. <laughs> right. Well, and Chuck, at what point do we look at the, at the different lineups coming out every day and think, Ron's playing the long game. He's getting guys playing time. He's seeing who can execute. He's seeing who has value. They are planning for 2025 right now, maybe mm-hmm. even 2026. Like, is, is, this, is this year all about being in the lab and experimentation? I mean, that's, that's fair, right? I mean... I wonder if that was the plan going in to the season. And when Ron Washington was hired, remember, Otani was still a free agent. He hadn't signed with the Dodgers yet. And so I wonder if they told him, like, we're not getting, we're not going to resign Otani. This is your team. And we're on a three-year plan or whatever it may be. Or we're going into 2024 and with the mindset of we want to see our younger players develop on the field on the major league baseball field and take it from there. Right. We're not in the market for any of these free agent pitchers. I mean, I was told that uh, we're not getting Blake Snell, the um, who's the uh, Southpaw, the Cubs, the Japanese left-hander that's been unhittable. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I can't remember his name. And then um, Montgomery. So we weren't getting any of those guys. And so I, and we weren't getting, you know, thank God we didn't get, uh, you know, uh, Cody Bellinger, he hasn't been great. Now he's hurt, mm-hmm. you know? And so I, I just wonder if he knew this all along and this is what, and so he's already kind of like say, this is our team. This is our goal. And we're hoping to get here. Right. And at the end of the 2021, I don't know. I really don't. To my earlier point that remember when I lost my train of thought, yes. we should have traded Otani period. Yes. If if the goal was never to if the goal is to succeed in the future, Perry Manasian must have been if I were the GM, I would be pissed if the owner told me when my contract is on the line, right? And you're expecting this Angels team to win the following season without Otani. Like we need to trade and get some pieces now. There were some good prospects being offered that were Ooh. ready to plug and play for this season that we could have in our lineup today. And we don't because we didn't trade Otani. And it just it just blows my mind. But, but was, to, the, that was, was to, that, that was the plan though to win? Or was the plan always to put one butts of, in the seats? One of hubris, right? Where he just yeah. thought that he could write a check and match anything and Otani would just come home. And it was all about cashing those sweet checks from all of the marketing money that he was getting from having Otani on the team and being able to sell merchandise and et cetera overseas in in APAC and right but is he brain dead to think that <laughs> that I mean that Otani is going to sign with us when the Dodgers <laughs> are going to triple or double what we would offer 
Right. I mean, I, I just, I, I don't know, man. Whoever is running that thing or is the secondhand guy to, to, Ota, or to Artie Marino, you know, maybe it's Carpino that said, you know, that's given him, I, I have no idea, but there's no direction. And not only that, I'll say one more thing. I'll let you guys talk here. Um, <laughs> there was no, there was no commitment to the fans. Like there was no like talk to the fans. Like, sorry, guys. If if they would have told us, guys, this is a retooling year, it could be brutal. It yeah. could be bad. We could be bad this year and next. But here's our goal. I would be fine with that. Yeah. yeah. But they're acting like we're going to be competitive. Yeah. And it's just BS. You know, I, that's but my if they, thing. if they do that, then people like Breezy end up not renewing her season tickets like she said she was on the fence for and went ahead and did. So it puts fans yeah. in a place where they feel put upon and they feel, you know, depressed and feel all of that. So Breezy, this is another thing that we had kind of talked about uh, before we jumped on. So from a, from a fan mental health standpoint, we'll start with fans and then we'll go to players. Cause I know <laughs> this is, you had shared that this is something that's, uh, you know, th that's big for you and a, and, and a big passion for your life is, is is this element so as a fan how do we work through this mental health element of every <laughs> all the emotions all the feels that we're going through the love totally. the hate the totally. yeah see i i disagree had they come out and said here's the plan we're rebuilding give us two years and we're gonna be competitive i would never have given away my season tickets because okay. I know that in two years, in three years, we're going to be good again. And I won't be able to get my seats back. Right. Like, mm -hmm. because there's a wait list and I will never be able to get those front row seats again. So, like, if I know that there's a plan and someone's being transparent with me, it's like same right. with dating. Like, if someone comes at you and they're like, hey, this is what you're getting with me. I'm like, okay, cool. Now I know what I'm working with. But if someone's like crazy all over the place and you're like okay never mind i don't i don't want to get on this roller coaster with you this is going to be crazy it's the same thing to me like i just don't understand the thought process of of trying to deceive us essentially is what it they're was, doing it was, it's deception really yeah, honesty, it is. honesty and transparency goes a long way to your point and i think absolutely yeah and it's, and, yeah. and I, I also, I don't think that they were planning on the rebuild because why did Ron Washington fly out to Mike Trout's house the second that they signed him to go sit down with him for three hours to, to have him tell him everything about what they needed to work on and da 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 Like, right. I genuinely think that they all were under the assumption that this was, they were going to go out there That's and they fair. were going to get the right players and they were going to succeed. And Artie Marino is the one that's just deceiving every single person, giving everyone false hope, signing on people like Ron Washington and saying all the right things. Artie Marino is probably the biggest narcissist on the planet. Like, probably. Yeah. I don't know him, but I'm sure he is. And he probably yeah. is a sociopath. One in 24 people are sociopaths. One in 24 <laughs> people are sociopaths. And guess what? It's usually people who are owning billion dollar corporations. Like you have to be not there with empathy or anything in order to get to that level. And so he's probably just bull face lying to every human being on the planet to get what he wants, which is money at the end of the day. So Love it's it. like, as, a, it. as a fan, do I want to support that person? Absolutely not. Um, but then it's like, I want to support Mike Trout. I want to support, you know, Zach Neto sure. and, and these guys. And it's like, it's a, it's a big catch 22 of, you know, I don't want to be supporting Artie Marino. I hope he freaking sells the team or something else. Um, and, and then we can start over, you know, that's the only way that I think it's going to get any better because he is a terrible human being. And it's very, very obvious. It's very obvious after this season. It's just insane. He, he, I guarantee you he is a sociopath. 
You heard it here first. By the way, we know that many members of the Angels organization listen to this podcast. We thank you for your viewership and listening and listenership. Um, if we are wrong, please set the record straight. Your yes. open door invitation to come on to this podcast, <laughs> open door inv invitation to sit down with someone like Jeff Fletcher. Unpack right. the truth for us. Tell us mm -hmm. where we're wrong. Happy to be wrong yeah. here. Tell us where we're wrong. Tell us why we're wrong. Tell us what the plan is. But yeah. when nothing is said and nothing happens, it creates a void. And that void is going to be filled by speculation, by observation, right. by all of the things that it's going to be filled with. And that's what we're doing today. And right. that's what <laughs> Angel's fan base is doing. Like, you know, again, you don't have to... You don't have to go far off of Angel's X, formerly known as Twitter, to, to see, to get a pulse of what the fan base thinks and what they right. feel. You don't have to do separate sessions where you pull people into a conference room and, you know, behind two-way mirrors and ask them questions. It's pretty evident what's going on. We see right. it on our website. We see it from the interactions we get from the people um, on our website and on our X feed. Yeah. Chuck, am I wrong? No, no, you're not. And um, yeah. And, and honestly, I, I, yeah, I mean, you were so right. You were so right on uh, breezy on that. And, and really thinking about what we were just talking about a few minutes ago uh, when I was talking about Ron Washington, maybe he knew the plan all along being, you know, like, Hey, we're just going to rebuild. The more I think about that, I, I think that's wrong because remember Mike Trout and Ron Washington were vying for guys. Yep. Mike Trout publicly said that I've been texting with Perry and Artie wanting to get these guys to improve yep. the team. And they didn't. <laughs> and so what does that do for the culture and the morale? You know, when your star player asks for help in the lineup or in this in the pitching staff. And the team just says, you know, it just falls on deaf ears. Right. You know? Great, great setup and segue for, for the next piece of what we were talking about before. So, Breezy, we've talked about how fans, you know, kind of are, are dealing with it, maybe need to deal with it. What do you think is going on in the players' minds and how they're, you know, working through the, um, the mental elements of, of where they find themselves right now? I think that your mind and your body are one in the same, like they're so connected. And if you're dealing with disappointment after disappointment and being lied to, especially by Artie Marino and that deception, um, you are not maybe trying as hard. You're not working out, you know, you're not giving it that all that passion, you know, and I think it's showing with the injuries. Like you're going to get injured faster. Um, and I, I think that they probably all know that they need some sort of sports psychologist um, and knowing Artie Marino and how he is so cheap, you know, he's just now finally getting the spring training facility fixed after what, five years like that. He's been yeah. promising that like, there's right. no way this man right. is, you know, going to sign on to do a sports psychologist. There's absolutely no way. And to me, being in this field, like men are so much less likely to ask for help. And they're in this environment where like you are under an enormous amount of pressure. You're under the spotlight. I actually went to treatment with a baseball player and I heard it firsthand of like the daily struggles and the disappointments and, you know, just dealing with like not being good enough, getting sent up and down and up and down. Like that's so bad for your mental health. And for someone to not care, like, and then for, on top of it, your boss literally not giving a shit about you. And yeah, like, I just, it, it's such a clusterfuck to me. Like, I just think that, you know, 
men need to be looked out for a little bit more, especially in this department where they can go and talk to somebody about their struggles. And, and I think if we even just did that, our team would improve so much. Like, and I get it. Baseball players make a lot of money. They could go out and hire their own therapist or, you know, sports psychologist, whatever. But like I said, they're so much less likely to ask for help and even feel like they need it because it's, uh, it's emasculating and you know they're uh, I don't need it I don't need help look at me I'm a you know an, a baseball player I don't need to be um figuring out why I feel this way you know I, I just need to do better yeah. tomorrow and that's yeah. not the case you know it's all relative to your childhood and why do they feel the need to perform at the you know highest level every single day and just you know, who knows what their coping mechanisms are too. What are they doing outside of baseball to re-regulate their system? It's got to be crazy. I think a lot of that is true. I think fortunately, I think a lot of those walls and barriers are crumbling down, especially as it relates to men. I think that um, a lot of them are, are surrendering a bit to knowing and understanding they need help. And I see that honestly a lot at, uh, at the high school level, even, um, you know, today with, you know, lots of sports teams, I say, especially in baseball, but maybe baseball, just because that's what my, my kids played. Mm -hmm. Um, and they weren't so much into football and basketball, although I had friends that had kids that, that did that. And, um, you know, not only did they have, you know, pitching coaches, their own personal pitching coach and their own pit personal, you know, hitting coach. But there was a good percentage of them that had sports psychologists that they were going to see in high school, which, wow. you know, it, it, on one hand, it's like, good. oh, my God, why are these kids feeling like they need to see somebody at the high school level for their sports? But on the other hand of that, it's good for them. Yeah. Like good, good for them and good for their parents and, you know, their family to understand that that part of your being is every bit as important as your mechanics as it relates to pitching or hitting that, it's you know, you, right. You have to have it together between the headphones yeah. um, in order for, you know, for things to, to work right. And Chuck, we've talked about it before that, you know, as Breezy kind of said that maybe they're not trying as hard because they're, they're not feeling like, you know, the upper management is all in. We've kind of talked about that. Maybe the opposite is true, that maybe they're trying too hard and that bat is just turning to sawdust in their hands because they're just gripping it so hard. They want to, they're, they're pushing and they're, as opposed to just letting it, letting it go and letting it flow. Yeah, I th- I think that we saw that happening with um with Trout this season, right? I mean, mm-hmm. he he was hitting a lot of home runs. He was stealing bases. It, it almost looked like old vintage Trout, right, in his younger days. But, you know, his batting average was low. He wasn't getting on base via the walk as much. Um to me that shows that he was striking out more. Um he was not coming through in in clutch situations Mm -hmm. and um you know i think that's carrying the team on his back and him trying to do too much to be honest with you sure um when you don't when you know he lost rendon right and then he kind of started to tank you saw his average just plummet yeah almost 100 points right um after that and so you know we thought initially wow he's going back to the leadoff spot where he flourished uh, in his younger days. Um, but he was just, he, you know, as a leadoff hitter, you're trying to get on base, but his mindset, he's like, he's trying to get on base, hit a home run, steal a base, just do everything in one at bat. Right. And he was just putting, it was, to me, it was putting way too much pressure on, on him because I mean, the lineup around him wasn't doing much. Right. Frank. So Indeed. Well, speaking of trout, it's uh, since our last podcast, and actually over the last week, it's been an interesting week uh, with uh, rants from guys like Stephen A. Smith and a hit piece column from Ken Rosenthal, where uh, Ken boldly suggested that Mike Trout was being held hostage 
<laughs> in Anaheim. Stupid. I, and, and by maybe a sociopath. One, right, right. By a sociopath <laughs> is keeping Mike Trout hostage in a dungeon underneath <laughs> Angel Stadium with, with little food and water. And he's <laughs> being tortured with loud music. And, you know, it's like, what, what the hell are you guys talking about? Um, before I go off on my rant, I'll turn it up. Who who would like to weigh in on uh, on this thing first? Chuck, it's all you. Well, I we covered this, Jeff. I think it was the last. Or oh, let's the cover it again. I any t- <laughs> any time I get a chance to shit all over Rosenthal and Stephen A. Smith, I feel like I want to take part of the podcast to do that. <laughs> I'll I'll just say this. He has said several times that he wants to win a championship with the Angels. Mm -hmm. This is his team. He's committed to this team. He signed a big extension to stay with this team. He loves being in Southern California during the spring and summer and then goes home during the winter to see family and to go hunting and fishing. Mm -hmm. Right. And so he's got the perfect life. Right. Why are these people trying to make it sound like he is a miserable human being? They're just selfish assholes that just want to see him in the playoffs. Don't you think us Angels fans want to see him in the playoffs too? But let me also say this. Trading him to the Phillies or the Yankees or the Astros or whoever it may be, that's not – that's no or the, even the Dodgers. That's not a guarantee. No. The Dodgers – for crying out loud, have won one real championship. And that the last time was 1988. Yeah. I'm not I'm not counting that COVID yeah, shit. You don't That's, get the you know, asterisk for the COVID year. Yeah. So anyway, no matter what team he gets traded to, you still got to get to the promised land. You got to win. There's so no please, guarantee. Breezy, are we missing something? Like, is there a Stockholm <laughs> syndrome going on right now with Mike Trout? <laughs> Where, where he is actually miserable as a hostage. He just doesn't know it, and he loves his captors. He loves his captors. <laughs> he, 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 you know what? I, I, I heard from an agent that they believe that the Angels wouldn't even be able to get anything for Mike Trout at this point. So maybe it could be that he is embarrassed that it's like that same type of like, I would never even want to like put myself out there to get disappointed that no other teams want me. There could be a little bit of that fear. Um, But also I think he is just, he's like Derek Jeter. He's just an extremely loyal person and really wants that image more than anything um to be the loyal guy like he's still with his high school sweetheart you know that's his his brand is that he is just this very loyal person and even if it's gonna take him to the you know whatever you were saying he's in a dungeon somewhere it's like lord knows that could be true he could be held hostage we don't know you know but well, you did mention he's a sociopath you know already so you never know <laughs> and Maybe a horrible could... human being you mentioned yeah. that he was a horrible human being as well that's he is. yeah if there's one care. takeaway we want all of you to take away from this podcast it's that Artie is a horrible human being <laughs> Again, now we could be wrong. So if somebody would like to come on the podcast or sit down with someone like a Jeff Fletcher and tell us where we're wrong, please, please do that please. for us. Yeah. I'd love to hear no, not thought. Jeff Fletcher. I want it straight from Marty Marino. All right. I don't need right. any sec I don't need any second or third parties. I want it to come straight from him. He hasn't come out and said shit to any of the fans. There's no there's there was no like direction of where this team is going. There was no communication to any of us. Well, right. how could there be? He doesn't even go to the games. I sit there and I yeah. look up in his suite. He is never there. Jeez. He doesn't go All to right. the games. How does he even know what's happening on this team? He doesn't. <laughs> All right, I mean, Jeff. Now it's your turn for your rant. I want to hear what you got to say. There is something. There is some deep-seated animosity and hatred 
that the media has toward the angels that I just don't understand. Yeah. Because we never, we, I feel like we've been hearing this Mike Trout needs to be traded somewhere bullshit for the last five plus years. We never heard this about Ken Griffey Jr. And what did yeah. his postseason career look like over his long, what, 19, 20 year career? It was never almost nothing. Yeah. He had one postseason where they played 11 games. Everything else was like nothing, right? Right. What we never heard this about Ichiro. We never heard this about Nolan Ryan, right? There's these Hall of Famers that had these long careers with little to no postseason activity or success. And no one ever said, oh, we need to trade this person to this, that, or the other team. I don't get the bullshit, but it is just that. It's bullshit. And if these guys have such horrible lives that they cannot imagine a scenario where a man, as Breezy said, who married his high school sweetheart, who has a wonderful child with another one on the way, and is loyal to a team and wants to be with one team, like the guy whose poster he had on the wall growing up of Derek Jeter was with one team. If your lives are so miserable that you can't fathom a world or fathom a person that is like that, my heart breaks for you because maybe Artie is not the worst person in the world and a horrible human being. Maybe it's you. And Stephen A. Smith and Ken Rosenthal, I'm looking at both of you. Mike drop. Mike drop. Yeah. Jeez. There you go. Man, you Woo! are. Ready. Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs> wow. That was All great. Right. Oh, God. You know I feel that so much you? better. <laughs> that was good. You know, <laughs> the thing is, too, that I think people forget is that Mike Trout lost his brother-in-law mm -hmm. and his best friend. And yeah. he's gone through two horrific deaths that most people have never experienced that type of tragedy before. Yeah. And yeah. when you go through something like that, you realize that there are things so much bigger than baseball. And it's like, He's actively choosing to stay here because, like you said, he has the best of both worlds. He gets this beautiful life yeah. where, you know, like he, he now sees that there's so much there, there's so much more to life than just baseball. So, like, why not get comfortable, be where I want to be, be where my wife wants to be and have all these yeah. people shut up like he has gone through so much let the guy just be and do what he wants to do he's been through enough and in two three five years if the angels organization turns it around please god please god please god <laughs> and this thing turns in successful and they do something with it what kind of an awesome 30 for 30 is that going to be? Oh, sure. Where a big segment of it is going to be all of the naysayers and, you know, oh, he should be traded. He should get out of here. He's being held hostage, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> right. And then they get the right pieces and they have the right leader. And maybe Artie leaves and a good owner comes in and they do all the things. And it's successful. And Mike is there as the cornerstone of the organization because he never left. He was faithful for them, to them, you know, from the from the outset. That's the story, right? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the ones you do a thirty for thirty on. That's the ones yeah. you do a movie about. Yeah. Let, yeah, let it unfold. And if it doesn't happen, great. Okay. Well, he was just like Ken Griffey Jr. He was just like Ichiro. I know Nolan Ryan won, you know, his first his first year with the Mets. You know, when he was there for half the season, but he was right. part of that team. But for the rest of the 24 years that he played, there was no other World Series that came. No. Nope. Yeah. So fuck those guys. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Let's go to the mailbag and see what we have, what the uh, what the fans are asking about. So right, Robert, Robert in, uh, let's see, where is this? In Texas says, if Artie opens up the checkbook for one or two really good starting pitchers next year, and we trade our contract year guys this year uh, for a couple of Cole Reagan lottery type guys. Would that make a difference this year for a success? 
uh, for success regardless of our record. I, I think so. I think you have to look at trading the Brandon Drury's. You have to hope that Brandon Drury starts to hit, though, because he's been dog shit lately. Yeah. I mean, out of the gate, really, he has been. Um, he always so, is in April, though. That's true. Um, but he needs to turn it around. There's guys that are, a lot of guys that are only on under contract for this year. So we need to hope that these guys actually perform well, because you have to, you, you have to trade them and get some prospects. Um, I like Cole Reagans because he was a guy that just, uh, you know, was a starter in the minors. They brought it, the, the Rangers brought him up as a reliever, didn't do too well. And then was traded to the Royals. And now he's like an ace for the Royals. So, we, God, do we need somebody like that? You know, we need some things to fall in our lap, right? Like, we we are so behind on getting some breaks. Like, the baseball gods, I mean, please. I mean, we need some some players that just come out of the woodwork. There, there are guys that are not prospects through the minor leagues that just come up and they just kill it. We need some of those guys, honestly. Yep. Um, and we need some trades to work in our favor. But, yeah, I think that um, – Corbin Burns is a free agent next season. I think that's somebody you got to look at. And he's an Orange County guy. So Yeah. All right. Let's see. Then we have one from Joey from Upland. And by the way, let me, let me stop and pause here. Joey from Upland, come here. <laughs> I want to talk to you about something, buddy. Every week we get, we get a question from Joe from Claremont. Followed two minutes later by a question from Joey from Upland. Joseph, I know you're the same guy. Just, <laughs> just, just put in the same question. Put, put it in with the same name, the same city. You don't have to switch it up. Like you, I get you. I see you. You're not fooling me. It, it's all good. Just put in as many questions as you want. All right. So this one was for Victor. So since Victor is not here. Breezy, I'm giving this to you. So, Breezy, if you were... <laughs> you're sitting in Victor's seat. You know, you're, right. in Victor's, right. you're in Victor's tile. You, so. you, you've taken over as the eye candy for this episode, So, uh, <laughs> since Victor's not here. All right, so, Breezy, if you were to take over as the GM this offseason, what would be the first thing that you would do? Ooh. On the spot. Wow. Um, can what I would you do I... so that people would not think that you're the worst human being <laughs> and help this team? I was going to say, I wouldn't take the job. If I know that Artie Marino is still the owner, like everyone oh hates Oh my God, I love that answer. Everyone yeah. hates Perry, but it's not Perry. Perry wanted to trade Shohei Otani last season and Artie wouldn't let him. So, I mean, to me, it's like, I wouldn't want to take the job, but if I had to, like, if I was being held hostage in a dungeon and I got hired on, um, what would I do? I mean, I don't, well, we may I, have, don't I don't feel we like may have to, we, we'll bring you back. We'll bring you back and then you'll, you can think this through and then you can come back with a good answer. I just don't think that there's anything that's going to save you right. right now. I really you're don't. Right. Like, I I don't even think we should. I mean, we got to trade the, yes, I agree. We have to trade Brandon Jury. We probably should trade Taylor Ward. But, like, also, if we're going to trade all of them and we're saying we're not going to trade Rendon or Trout, it's like, what's the point? I don't get right. it. So, yeah. I don't know. That's a really tough. Perry but you're has right. Hard Perry is standing in front of the grill, ready to fucking cook, and he's waiting for Artie Marino to bring the steaks out, and he never does. And so I, I it's like he dangles them, and all all, <laughs> all, 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 all he's getting is veggie burgers. Yeah, and... Exactly. <laughs> Nobody yeah. asked for that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, um, Chuck. Here's here's one for you. Uh, this is from Noah from Mission Viejo. He wants to know how many drinks does it take you guys to watch this Angels, to watch an Angels game? Honestly, I've gotten to the point where uh, that's, I mean, I don't even, I don't, I don't need alcohol. I just turn the game off. I just turn the game off and I go find some movie to watch. Oh, guys, I, I go mow the lawn instead. 
of watching the game. I'm like, you know what? Mowing the lawn sounds more enjoyable. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. go mow the lawn and do some edging, you yeah. know, and get all the weeds done, you know, you know, run around with my, uh, my pet goats in the backyard. That's it. I'm like, anything that's going to bring me happiness, I, I, I'm for it. Going on a walk with the dog, it doesn't matter. That's yeah. what I do. I just shut the game off. And if I come back and they're back in the game, I'll turn it on and I'll watch it. But you just got to get away. You get, you, that's how I deal with things, Breezy. I mean, it's like some people are like, oh, my gosh, we're going to just drink yourself to death. No, I'm, I'm doing something that's going to bring me happiness. I'm going to get out and do something, yeah. you know, or, or watch something else. Screw there, these guys. There They're you go, gonna Angels Organization. Move. We know yeah. you're listening. That is what your core fan base is doing. They're not watching the games. They're That's mowing they, the lawn. They're mowing the lawn <laughs> and playing with goats. <laughs> <laughs> I do right. That's so bad. <laughs> All right, Breezy. So I know your story is not one of how many drinks you have. So I'd love for you to share kind of you know, what you do and uh, in a bit of um, your business, your story and, and things that you do. Uh, so maybe we can spend the last little bit of the episode with, with you sharing that with us. Sure. Thank you. Um, so like I said, I made a half year sober and I started my own company trying to help other people um, recover from drugs and alcohol. Um, so we have a website and an app where people can go on and they can find detox, residential, um, inpatient and partial hospitalization and sober living homes throughout the United States. Um, we make it a really easy process. It's, we kind of replicated our website off of Airbnb. Um, so they just, it just makes it a really easy process for people to find help um, and then we also host a yearly event where um, we used to do it in Big Bear. Now we do it in uh, the Sequoias and people from all over the world. I mean, we, we have people from Hawaii and Florida and New York, all over the country. They come and um, we kind of just try to reintegrate them back with who they were before they started drinking. Uh, a lot of people who turn to addiction they have traumatic childhoods. And so they didn't get that, you know, good childhood. So that's kind of what we try to do. We bring them back to kids camp and we just have as much fun as possible. We play games. We have like an Olympic race. We do hiking, breathworks, yoga, um, high ropes, rock climbing, like all sorts of fun things. And um, it's like the most rewarding thing for me now that like I have this weird little platform on Twitter, I actually get a lot of people messaging me and, you know, because of baseball, they're like, how did you mm. do it? How did you get sober? And, and so I get to share my experience with them about that, which is kind of why I want to talk about it on here, because it's like so many people, especially men, like it's, it's been all men that have reached out to me on Twitter about their struggles mm. with wanting to get help. Um, and I've invited them to come to meetings and, you know, um, so far nobody has, but, um, I'm always, you know, I'm always willing to help people who, who want, who want the help, you know? So, yeah. That's beautiful. That's awesome. And where do they go? What is the website they, uh, they can go to? Taste recovery. Like you're tasting food. That's, that's the name of it. Taste recovery.com. Taste mm recovery.com. -hmm. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. great. And if you want to follow Breezy on X, formerly known as Twitter, she is at Breezy Nolan. Nolan is N-O-W-L-A-N, and she has a link to her um, her website on, on there, too. Yeah. So if, if that's something that you're struggling with, I would encourage you to do that. And before we jumped on, we you know, when we found out that Victor couldn't make it last minute, we we reached out to Breezy. We were kind of like, oh, shit, it's Cinco de Mayo. Do we maybe this isn't the episode? And she was like, no, you guys have have a drink or whatever. So um, but it it's it's such a cool thing. And, and I have people in yeah. my life that I know that have struggled with it. Um, and it is it's wonderful when people find find healing and, and find their peace again. So, yeah. Uh, Thank right. you for being, thank you for being here today, but thank oh, you for being the kind of person in this world that, uh, 
that is leaving it better than you found it. I think that's right. awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm so excited you guys asked me. I didn't think you actually would. <laughs> we didn't, we didn't. And honestly, you know, just last minute, I was like, there's no way that she's going to be able to join. It's just going to be the, the Jeff and Chuck show today. But when you said, yeah, I would love to, I was like, yeah, let's go. So that worked yeah, out great. So excited. Yeah. So <laughs> very cool. Jeff, right. you have something you want to unbox. Well, uh, so yeah. So my father on Easter came upstairs with this, this box when we, I was over at his house. It was just filled with these angel items. And most of them were giveaways from back in the 80s and 90s during like a 15, 20 year time period where he had season tickets. And Breezy, you think it's, it's hard selling your tickets now. During that time, my dad couldn't give away tickets. Yeah. So we would get tickets to games, my buddies and I, and go, because he's like, I can't sell them. You got, do you want them? And we would go and we would be like one of 4,000 people in, you know, in the place. I mean, it was nobody there. So I got this whole box downstairs, but I pulled a couple of items out. Uh, this one wasn't a giveaway, but it's still pretty cool. This is the... Reggie Jackson. Oh. Uh, 500th home run. I was there shirt. Whoa. Wow. Look at that. So if so you're, cool. if you're listening on Spotify or something, jump over to, uh, to YouTube, YouTube. and you can see the, yeah. the thing. Um, Very yeah, cool. so that, that was pretty cool. That's then, cool. Uh, then I have this still in the wrapper baseball helmet. And it, it's the, let me get oh, this. I it, love it. It's the CA from right Cow before, from the Angels. right before they, right before Disney bought them, mm -hmm. right? This was the California Angels logo right before Disney bought them. And it was from, if you look at the back, it says there's, it says big with this little cheese guy. So this was the cheese industry that was sponsoring this, this giveaway. Ah. But yeah, still in the wrapper, still in the plastic thing. And that's the my last... favorite logo. Honestly. Yeah, mine that's... too. Yeah. Love that logo. Yeah. This one is pretty, pretty funny. So this is from, was sponsored by Butterfinger and Baby Ruth. <laughs> And it is a still in the box. And if you can see, this was a Mother's Day giveaway. So for all of you listening, oh. next Sunday is Mother's Day. Don't forget your mom. Get your shopping <laughs> done before. But this was a Mother's Day giveaway. And look at the logo on that. This is wow. like, oh, this like is that one definitely the 80s. But it's, yeah. a, it's a book lamp. So what? the, what the idea lamp? behind this... This is when books were a thing before there were Kindles and stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's essentially a, a, a flashlight with this hook that goes on to it. Where, where's the, where's this go on right here? And you clip this onto your book. So if you're, wow. if, if you're laying in bed at night with your significant other and you don't want to wake them up, you clip this onto your book and you, position this light so that you could read your book in the middle of the night without waking the the person wow. up so this is kind is of an a, angel logo on it and there's an yeah, angel's logo there's, a, there's an angel's logo along with wow. baby, baby ruth, and baby ruth. Oh, wow that's cool that's Isn't actually that very cool that is so. i love that there you go so that's jeff show and tell for this <laughs> episode we'll have more throughout the uh Oh, throughout good. the season. Well, is, is there quite a few items well, there's, in yeah, there? Yeah, there's other stuff down. I haven't even gone through everything that's in it. I was just kind of pulling stuff off the top. So, yeah, wow, lots of other good surprise. stuff. Wow, what a That'll be fun. Oh, and this. So for Cinco de Mayo, I have this. This is not old, but it is a salsa. Oh. A salsa thing with the Angels logo. This was a giveaway. I forget who gave this one away, but it's the Angels logo on that side and then the Angels Okay. And this goes with Cute. my thing of I chips, want which that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I have well, that's cool. great. Yeah, it's like all my stuff is angel stuff. It's terrible. Yeah. Love it. Love <laughs> it. Chuck, anything else? 
No, I think this was a great show. Thanks, uh, Breezy, for coming on. I mean, yes. we, I think we covered a, a lot in, uh, in, in stuff that we don't normally cover, which to me, that it was, it was great um, to hear your perspective on the mental health, um, to hear about what you do um, for helping folks get sober. And um, I mean, it's, this has been one hell of a show. It's, it's, oh. it's not, it's, it's quite different from our normal shows. And I, I think that's why I like it. How about you, Jeff? Good stuff. Love, love yeah. having you here. This was, uh, this was great. It was, yeah. it was really cool. I was excited when, uh, when Chuck said that you said yes to this. So yeah. Yay. Please you come again. Yeah. I was like, please ask me again. I and next so time fun. when you come on, like, don't be, don't be shy. Like share what you really <laughs> think of Artie and the organization. We don't want yeah, you to don't hold, hold back, back like, next time. I, I know you were like, a little timid. feel like you, you know, had the training wheels on a little and you yeah. didn't feel comfortable sharing what was inside. So, <laughs> you know, let it out next time. <laughs> I have zero anger in my body whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Clearly I need to talk about it during therapy. <laughs> yeah <laughs> indeed indeed well maybe that's what this podcast is going to turn into and to help us uh yep. us and all the rest of the angels fans get through this season yeah. yeah all right well for chuck richter and breezy nolan i am jeff stoddard this was angels win episode 35 and we will see you next time thanks for listening thanks for listening to the angelswin.com podcast with chuck richter and jeff stoddard until next time, go Halos. Say goodbye.